students, today we will discuss the image formed by curved mirrors. In this lesson, you are expected to construct ray diagrams to locate and describe the image formed by curved mirrors. In our previous discussion, we have learned that plane mirrors produce images that are located behind the mirror, the orientation is upright, same size as the object, and the type is virtual. Are the images produced by curved mirrors the same as that of the images formed by plane mirrors? There are two kinds of curved mirrors or spherical mirrors. They are convex or diverging mirror and concave or converging mirror. The concave mirror reflects light inward to one focal point. That is why it is also called converging mirror. It converts light rays to a focal point called real focus. It is used to focus the light rays. On the other hand, a convex mirror reflects light outwards. It is also called diverging mirror because light rays after reflection moves outward or is scattered. Reflected light rays are extended to form a virtual focus. Therefore, it cannot be used to focus light rays. There are two types of images formed by curved mirrors. One is a real image. A real image is formed when light rays actually meet after reflection. It can be formed on a screen. It is inverted relative to the object. While a virtual image is formed when light rays do not actually meet after reflection, we must extend the two reflected rays to locate the image form. The intersection of these two reflected rays is where the image is formed. It cannot be formed on the screen and upright relative to the object. To locate and describe the image form using ray diagram, we have to consider the following parts of our mirrors. The principal axis is the straight line going through the center of mirror that is perpendicular to the mirror surface. The vertex V is the center of the mirror. It is the point on the mirror surface where the principal axis meets the mirror. The center of curvature C is the center of a sphere whose surface forms the curved mirrors. The inward surface or part of the sphere is the concave mirror, while the protruding part or the outward surface is the convex mirror. The focal point or focus F lies between the vertex and the center of curvature. So the distance from C to F is equal to the distance from F to V. The distance from the vertex to the center of curvature is called the radius r. The distance from the vertex to the focus is called the focal length f. The focal length is half the length of the radius. Aside from these parts, we must also know the different rules in ray diagram for curved mirrors. There are four principal rays in concave and in convex mirrors. Ray diagram is a graphical method in locating and describing the image form. These are the four principal rays in curved mirrors. For concave mirror, PF ray, a ray of light parallel to the principal axis, is reflected passing through the principal focus. FP ray, a ray of light passing through the focus, is reflected parallel to the principal axis. CC ray, a ray of light passing through the center of curvature reflects back along its own path. And V-ray, a ray of light directed to the vertex reflects at equal angle from the principal axis. Then for convex mirror, PF-ray, a ray of light parallel to the principal axis is reflected as if passing through the principal focus. FP-ray, a ray of light directed towards the focus is reflected parallel to the principal axis. CC ray, a ray of light directed towards the center of curvature, reflects back along its own path. And V ray, 
a ray of light directed to the vertex reflects at equal angle from the principal axis. We can choose two rays out of these four principal rays when locating the image since we need only two to let the reflected rays meet. So let's start locating the image form in four mirrors. For concave mirror, the object is placed beyond C of the concave mirror. I will use PF ray and CC ray. We draw incident light ray from the object parallel to the principal axis is reflected passing through the focus. Then a ray passing through the center of curvature is reflected back along its own path. The next step is to look for the meeting point of the two reflected rays. The reflected rays meet somewhere between the center of curvature and the focus. And you can see that the meeting point is below the principal axis. This denotes that the image is inverted. So please take note that if the meeting point of the two reflected rays is below the principal axis, it must be inverted. If the meeting point of the reflected rays is above the principal axis, the image must be upright. We describe the image in terms of the following. Location or L, orientation, O, size, S, and type or T. The location can be described relative to the parts of the mirror. It can be beyond C, at C, between C and F, between F and V, or behind the mirror. The orientation can be upright or inverted. The size can be described relative to the object size. It could be smaller than the object, bigger or larger than the object, or same size as the object. Or you can use reduce for smaller than the object and enlarge for bigger than the object. The type can be virtual or real image. So if the object is placed beyond C of the concave mirror, the location of the image is between C and F, the orientation is inverted, the size is smaller than the object, or reduce in size, and the type is real because the reflected rays actually meet at a point. In the next example, the object is placed at C of the concave mirror. Again, you can choose two out of the four rays. I will use PF ray and FP ray. So based from the ray diagram, the image is located at C, or that is exactly below the object. The orientation is inverted since we found the meeting point of the two reflected rays below the principal axis. So please take note of that. Same size as the object, and the type is real image. Then we move the object somewhere between C and F. Let's try to use PF ray and V ray. The image is located beyond C, inverted, larger than the object, and a real image. Next, we place the object exactly at the focus of the mirror. I'll use PF ray and V ray. We notice that the two reflected rays are parallel to each other. Parallel rays never meet at a point even we extend them. This shows that there is no image form because the reflected rays do not meet. Remember that there is an image form if there is a meeting point of the two reflected rays. Then lastly, we place the object very near the mirror that is between F and the vertex or between F and the mirror. I'll choose PF ray and V ray. Here, the reflected rays do not meet, but they are not parallel to each other. Somewhat, we can extend them and try if they will meet at any point. 
The image is found behind the mirror, upright, larger than the object, and virtual image since we extended the reflected rays. For convex mirror, place the object far from the mirror. We use FP ray and CC ray. We observe that the two reflected rays do not meet. We try to extend them to find the image form. The extended reflected rays meet behind the mirror, upright image, since the meeting point is above the principal axis, is smaller than the object, and virtual. Next, we place the object near the convex mirror. We use PF ray and V ray. Again, we extended the reflected rays to locate the image form. We found the image behind the mirror. It is also upright, is smaller than the object, and virtual. So regardless of the object location from the convex mirror, the image is always located behind the mirror, upright, is smaller than the object, and virtual. But if you compare the image to image size, the further the object is from the convex mirror, the smaller the image. For concave mirror, the descriptions of the image depends on the object distance or the distance of the object from the mirror. The image size becomes larger as the object moves towards the concave mirror. By this time, you will answer these questions. Alright, we've done so far. I hope you learned a lot in this lesson. See you on my next video lesson. Goodbye and God bless. And please don't forget to subscribe to my channel.